Hello guys and welcome. Yes. Um surprise, surprise, they dropped this one on us very, very short notice, didn't they? Yes, uh the Friesland or HNLMS Friesland uh D812 is in the game. So here we go. This is my uh, final review and my <clears throat> I'm gonna show you my gameplay as well. Um I'll show you my captain build and modules. So, a bit of history about the Friesland. What is she? Um, she is a real destroyer. She was the first of the Friesland class. Uh, she was in service with the Royal Netherlands Navy uh, from 1956 to 1979. There have been 14 other ships with the Friesland name, so it's quite a quite a poignant name for the for the du for the Royal Navy for the Dutch Royal Navy. Uh, she's one of eight that were built um, built by the NDSM. Uh, in Amsterdam. Um, her keel was laid in December 1951. Um, she was launched the 21st of February 1953, so it took two years for completion. And she was finally put in service on the 22nd of March in 1956, so quite a long process, but as as the lead and name class of a, of a um, as the lead ship and the name carrying of a class, there's going to be a lot of sea trials and things like that going on. So that's the IRL one. Um, did she did she see any active service history or anything like that? She actually did. Um, July 1956, her and a cruiser uh, visited Leningrad for the first time since 1914, where they were officially were welcomed by the Soviet authorities into the uh, harbour at Kronstadt. Uh, the West New Guinea dispute in 1962, um, she managed to stop an Indonesian landing on the island of Misul. Um, and then on the 29th of July 1979, she was finally decommissioned. Um, she was the only one of her class that wasn't sold to the Peruvian Navy. Um, the remaining seven uh, Friesland class were all sold to the Peruvian Navy. So, um, she's in World of Warships. How can we grab her? Uh, very easy, very very simple, guys. She is available for one million free XP. Uh, she sits right there at T9 in the common in the European tech tree, where she joins Bliskovitcher. Um She does have a Dutch captain, uh, Dirk van Alsen, in my case here. Um, what's special about Friesland in the game for you? Uh, number one, she is the only destroyer. Uh, that is a proper destroyer um, to have no absolutely no torpedoes um, as you can see a really nice design again one thing that we can all agree on is that world of warships has some of if not the best models in game for the detail and the way that she the way that they output the, output the ships um, so we have couple of things to go through let's have a look then on the information number one um, concealment with myself is 7.1 now that might seem quite big um, my view on Friesland is she's kind of a support destroyer she's not a she's not a go and cap or anything like that I feel a lot of people have said she's a DD hunter and while she is a DD hunter through some of her equipment and setup that she has the concealment is not one of them um, but I have my own reasons for that and I will show you on my setup in a second. Maneuverability wise, she's not the quickest with the speed flag, 37.8 knots, but she's got a really quick run of four seconds, um, so she is very maneuverable. The turning circle at 620 meters is not mega small, but it's good enough. AA defense, as you can see, is absolutely stellar, 83. Six single mounted 40 millimeter borfers, and then her main armament here, are actually also dual, dual purpose AA guns as well. Um, so she has actually got a really good AA setup, and as you'll see, she's actually more catered towards it. Her artillery, uh, which is our main guns, are 120mm, 50 caliber Borfers, um, number 10, 12.3 range. In my setup, 1.4 second reload. And the turrets take 8.3 seconds to rotate. 7% um, chance of fire in my setup, but 825 meters per second means that they are fairly quick shells as well. They're not the floaty ones that you may become, you may have been accustomed to. 
survivability wise she has 20,750 HP again this is in my config yours may change armor layout is well <laughs> there's no arm there's, there's no worse armor than mo there's no ar there's no armor so it's good armor um, basically she's very very weakly armor so through and throughs are more than, ha more than likely to happen multiple through throughs will see you take a lot of damage modules uh, let's have a look at this okay so as you can see I'm running a premium damage control party mod one I'm running a dummy I'm running the hydro mod from the coal uh, from the armory I'm running main army system mod one I'm running propulsion mod two concealment and then main battery three consumable wise as I said this is where you get to see some of the Friesland's foibles Premium repair on damage control. Four smokes. They take 30 seconds to act to action. They last for over two minutes. And then they take just over two and a half minutes to reload. But you only get four shots. Defensive AA. Uh, damage per second by 50%, 300% for the for your for your flat bursts. Lasts for 40 seconds, reloads in 76. And then the big one for this ship, the Hydro, three and a half kilometer for torpedoes, five kilometer for ships, and runs for two minutes as well, um, with the extended upgrade, like we said uh, here. So, a really nice aggressive radar, but no torpedoes. The guns, HE and AP, is very very good, a really good rate of fire. Um, Exterior wise, I am just running the standard camo that comes with the ship. So this is a Type 10 Friesland camo, minus 20% to your battle to the battle servicing and 100% free 100% XP. Signal wise, I have the full suite. So November Echo set sevens, um, Foxtrots, Sierra Mike for speed, Juliet Yankee for flood, uh, India Yankee for fire, a debt flag because reasons free xp for papa papa and then i'm also running the aerobus flag for more free xp as well uh, i am grinding free xp flag wise i've switched it from the commonwealth flag to the actual flag of the netherlands horizontal trickle of red white and blue um as you has been used by the national navy flag of the netherlands since the 17th century the dutch flag is one of the oldest trickle flags in continuous use as well bit of history there for you and I'm not running any other flags on her, uh, not even my alpha flag or anything like that. So that is how I've got my Friesland set up. In terms of the modules, in terms of the ship, let's take a look at the captain. Now this is a 19 point captain build, so obviously it'll give you an idea of what you will build up towards. Uh, I'm running both PM and PT for my level two. I'm running AR and I'm running last stand. I'm also running a survivability expert, coupled with basic fire training, coupled with superintendent, coupled with IFHG. What would I suggest your basic 10 point captain builds are? I would suggest uh, going with PT, with Last Stand, with BFT, and IFHE, and then build the other ones on there as you can as you can do as you grind the captain up, okay? Um so that is my Friesland build, that is, that is it. What do I think of the Friesland? Um, well, to give you an idea, I have, um, when we got the update patch, any XP that we earned from testing the ship went on to my um, Orlan. So my Orlan is the Russian, uh, the Russian Navy tier one ship. My Orlan currently has 352,823 free XP are locked up on it. So that does include ships such as the Smolensk and things like that. I know because I saw it this morning when it updated, it put 30,000 XP from the Siegfried onto this ship. I've played a relatively large number of games in closed testing away from stream and everything like that on this ship. Um, and I've just played my first live game in it. Um, that game is coming up shortly for you guys, and I am going to record it. couple of things about the Friesland, okay? Number one, 
yes, she doesn't have great concealment in this setup. And yes, she only has two double mounted turrets with a very high rate of fire. Yes, she has no torpedoes. Yes, she's not as quick as you may expect her to be. However, and it's a big however, okay. She's not your typical destroyer. Treat her more as a super light cruiser. Treat her as a Smolensk. Now the Smolensk obviously has more firepower, more uh, more health, um, and torpedoes. But the gunnery aspect, you can kind of apply the same ruling to uh, the Friesland. And if a Friesland and a Smolensk were in, were working closer together, that would be a very, very, very dangerous setup for the rest of the team to engage with. Um, so I'm going to show you my 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 game in it. Um, I'm actually quite happy with the game. I think it's a really good one. I'm going to show you the post-game results right now. Um, and you'll be able to see this game coming up uh, as soon as this. So as you can see, I dealt 65,726 damage from 222 shells. 148 penned, 74 did them. I incapacitated three modules. I set four fires. And I actually spotted a ship as well. I received 374,000 credits. Um, 6,679 XP with 4,016 free XP. That's because I am grinding free XP at the minute, so that is inflated at the minute. <clears throat> From the team score, as you can see, I finished respectably in fourth place on the team with 1,365 base XP. Um, not a bad showing at all in that game. In the game, I think. Um, Damage-wise, as you can see. Uh, 33.2k to a Missouri, which we caught, which uh, we didn't sink. Uh, the Udaloy, we did 16k to, well, nearly 17 actually. 7k to a Kremlin, 4.3 to a Mino, and 4.2 to a Shimakaze, who survived at the end of the game. We did lose our engine, um, and we did take 12,873 uh, damage in return, but you know we kept afloat, we kept our nose got dry. We also helped to spot 67,924 damage. Um, now that is a big important number number for this ship. How much can you assist? We only dealt 9.4k of fire damage. Uh, most of our damage came from our main battery. Uh, as you can see, I fired a HE exclusively as well. Did 146 plane damage as well. Um, a relatively short game at 12 minutes and 8 seconds as well. So this is going to be a slightly longer than normal video. Anyway, join me in a few minutes and we'll watch the game together and record it. Thanks guys and I'll see you in the next, I'll see you in the replay. Hi guys and welcome to the battle that I have for you today. As you can see, um, it is a tier 10, tier 9 battle. Uh, and we are in the Friesland. This is the game I've just shown you the results screen for. So sit back and enjoy this one. Um, I thought it was a, a quite a, an interesting game. There's a couple of foibles that do happen in this one. So here we go. We are in D812, uh, Friesland herself. Uh, game aside, I'm going to quick look at the ship. As you can see, lovely, lovely model, as we said. Um, reasonably not too bad off the line, better than I remember. Um, so I think our engines might have had a little bit of a uh, little bit of fettling. Um, team is asking us to capture C, but as you can see, we're just going to cruise on towards B. Um, I do realise fully on that because of the positioning of myself, I'm not the best destroyer to go and get the cap. So in a second, what you're going to see is I'm going to back off to about half a quarter speed. Put the rudder over onto the left hand side and just let the ship just drift slightly. And we're going to let the Yugamo rush in, push in here. He's got a lot lower detectability than I have, so he's a much better ship to cap. Um, and we're better positioned here to actually just, you know, help and uh, support as he pushes in. So, as you can see, we're set up ready here. We've got our hydro, got our smoke. We're ready to go. Um, the team is deploying re reasonably well. Um, nobody's camping too far back. Enemy Frederick de Gross has been spotted there up in B5. Um, so we're just keeping, we're just mooching about here, waiting for the Yugamo to push him. Um, probably should have actually communicated this a bit better with the Yugamo, I think. Um, and I think you'd agree with me there. So, nice and easy. 
not much happens for the first few minutes of the game. I mean, it's a little bit quiet and a little bit cagey, this one. But remember, it's only a 12-minute long game, as we saw before. So we are running our uh, Commonwealth flag there, the European nation flag there, not the Dutch flag, as you, as you saw as you saw previously. I, ch I did change that cheekily um, just uh, before. Enemy force detected. There we go. Quick look around what's going on. There we go. Kremlin and Missouri. Now, that Missouri is going to be a little bit of a problem for us. Spoiler alert. So we crack her up a bit to full throttle to push forward. We're going to be between these two islands here that you see. Uh, F and G are five. So. Here we go. We've got free. We're using the free cam now. And we're going to clip back into our cam view. We've got a Smolensk there pushing across. Now, my initial thought was, should I drop smoke for the Smolensk? Uh, but he didn't ask. So I just thought, you know, we'll just we'll just sit back. We'll wait. We'll let this develop. Uh, we've not got any scores on the board at the minute. We're just, you know, we're letting the team work out. We've got a Haragumo and a Noodaloy here. And we have a Minotaur now. Now, the Noodaloy goes to smoke and begins to cap with the Haragumo uh, on its own. Uh, cap A. So, my worry is the Missouri, the Yamato, and the Kremlin that are off to my right-hand side here. Um, especially the Missouri, because obviously, 9km nine, nine radar, 9.9km uh, .9 radar, we are liable to get spotted. A little bit concerned, don't want to get caught up too much in that. So, we're going to keep pushing forward. I'm trying to get within Hydro range to spot the Udaloi. I'm keeping my eye on the Minotaur at the minute because obviously at any minute that Minotaur could snap around and start laying into us. But he takes a big hit there, as you saw. Lost about half his health, so that's at least at least one Citadel. Um, we're now relatively, I'm feeling relatively safe now. I've not been spotted by anything. Uh, the Missouri hasn't triggered his radar. So we can keep pushing forward, but we do get detected by the Eagle Eye pushing out at high speed towards us. We can then see, here we go, uh, the Oodaloy turning to fire, but look at the rate of fire that we were able to put out here. A little bit of lean. Um, we don't mind soaking the fire. We've got our Hydro running, but we are being targeted by three. Um, we press our repair to keep our engine at full chat, but we keep lacing the fire into the Oodaloy. Unfortunately, the Oodaloy has lost his engine, and a couple more hits, and there goes the Oodaloy. He's out. We don't get the kill, unfortunately. Someone else manages to uh, borrow that kill from us. Uh, we keep running away. The AA opens up. We get a spot on another ship. But the Minotaur is there behind us, so what we're going to do is we kite away slightly. Stop and drop smoke. Not the smartest thing to do. Try and put some blind shots towards, the, towards that Minotaur. Uh, we don't connect with any of these, if I remember correctly. There we go. And now we've been radared by the Missouri. There's the Minotaur, um, who's opening up on us, so we're going to return fire. Again, if you notice, it's a 1.2 second reload we've now got down to with an adrenaline rush with the damage we've taken. So we are able to keep the fire up quite substantially. We need to push. Our aim isn't perfect, but it's not too bad. We did set a fire though on the Minotaur. Um, we check around to make sure we can't be hit by anything. Um, it's at this point we do realise that there is a Hanagumo there in the cap, as you can see, who's lining us up. Uh, we bring around, we slow down, and we start to open fire. The Hanagumo, as you can see there, is flooding, I think, and he's come to a stop as well. But as you can see, he's taking a lot of fire, and in fact, he is going to go down very soon. There we go. The Smolensk takes out the Hanagumo in quick succession. Now we're still in a rather interesting position because of our hydro. We are actually spotting these battleships on the other side. Um, we have the torpedoes coming in there from the Minotaur. Um, so we pull forward, we turn around, the torpedoes run out of range, which is really nice. Um, I make a decision here, which is probably the wrong one, that sees my hydro's over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push towards the Fletcher, the Duyuzimo, and the Shimakaze. Uh, and we're going to leave these guys here hugging this rock. Um, the Hindenburg has taken out the Fletcher, a really useful kill. Um, but as you can see, we're down to about a 1.2 second reload on these guns now. Um, so as you can see, my setup is kind of a hybrid DD Hunter, max the guns out. 
um, but it does work. Um, I'm quite comfortable and quite happy with it. We're up to about 21k of damage. We spotted 23 and we're still spotting furthermore now because we are the one lighting the Uzumo out. So there we go. Um, somebody points out very carefully that we do have a Frederick de Gross that is on J-Line Border Patrol duties. Um, every, uh, we've got our Sommers and Nürburg. Uh, and are going to capture the sea cat for us now which is going to really help us because as you can see we do have a big points advantage already but you know we want to make sure and secure that we've still got 31 seconds left before our smoke and 36 seconds for our hydro to back up i'm keeping an eye this way for the kremlin uh who's going to pop around that corner and there's a lot of me saying that i should be low opening up i probably would have got more damage had i done this um but I figured I want to wait a little bit longer till my smoke is ready. Then I get radar by the Missouri, so it's a case of, you know what, in for a penny, in for a pound, let's get these guns singing. Shots out into the Kremlin. Really nice there, and we can just start to rack up some damage now. And uh, we pop our, ra pop our smoke. The Missouri's radar shouldn't be out in, in a few seconds, so popping our smoke now. Um, should mean that by the time it's fully set, we're all good to go. We spot the Shimakati on the other side, who's also shooting at us. Uh, quickly swing around. Obviously, with the way our guns are set up, they're a little bit longer to rotate than normal. We do have really good gun angles, though, as you can see. And we start to put some shots out downwind now into the Shimakati, forcing him to turn away. Uh, we do have Hydra, so we do want to think about popping this soon, because obviously if the Shimmer's turning, that means the Shimmer's laid, laid some, smoke, some sausages in the water. We've got a final on the Shimakase. There goes our Hydro. We haven't spotted them yet, but remember it's five, five kilometers, three and a half kilometers we spot the torpedoes, not the five that we spot the ship. We now start to put some blind fire into the Missouri. You can see where he's moving, but we do get left behind him here. Our shots need to be a lot further forward than they were previously. So we adjust our aim ever so slightly. There we go. The torpedoes are coming in now from the Shimakaze. Missouri's been reacquired. So take a bit of a chance there. And now we've got a, a little bit of a torpedo beat moment. Uh, we head between these two, the two spreads here. Bit of a wiggle. But there we go. We're all gravy. Uh, I look at, I'm taking a look at my damage and my spotting, and I'm kind of thinking I want to open up on this Missouri more, but he's now just out of my range. But my thinking is, you know what, let's circle around, let's let the rest of the team catch up. We've got a Hindenburg and Yugamore hunting the Shimakazi up north. I've got a good support here with this Sommers. Um, he's going to have plenty of tops to scare the, scare the uh, Missouri with. Uh, and you never know, he could be friendly and drop us a smoke screen as well. And if he doesn't, I've only got a few, I've only got a, f a matter of seconds more to wait. So we've already spotted our 67,335 damage as well, which is really, really good. But we still have a bit more damage to get out of this game. So our smoke screen's about to run out. Um, decision made, we've got to win this game, so let's get a bit more damage. Let's take a look at the Missouri. The Missouri's backing up. Uh, he's very lucky that he doesn't take a friendly torpedo from the Shimakaze here. Um, it's time for us to start lacing some more shots into this, see if we can get another fire, see if we can get some more damage. We'll pop out to see if the Yamato's going to take a swipe at us. Nothing officially yet. Shots are racking up nicely on the Missouri. There we go, we've got our fire. So he's going to cook for a little bit. Donate us a few more extra damage. Victory is in sight. I've got torpedoes coming in from the Shimakaze. I stop, drop. To and we start putting more fire out on the Missouri. To As we can see, the Missouri has put out the fire. We have a look behind us to see if we can uh, if we've got any more torpedoes coming. They're all safe away from us though. So let's start getting some more shots into the Missouri. Putting a bit of lead on here. As you can see, we've got quite a good split between the guns. One fires, one fires, one fires, one fires, one fires. Two shells each time. Another fire on the Missouri. There we go. So, you know, we're going to rack up a bit more damage on the Missouri, but he is going to get taken out rather quickly. 
Um, he's going to go behind there. We are able to keep dropping some shells quite respectably on him. Um, you know, all the time, just taking a little bit of damage here, a little bit of damage there. But he gets taken out by the Uzumo. And that leaves the Smolensk over there. Bit of a dangerous ship, we need to be wary of that. And a Shimakaze. Shimakaze gets spotted at 10k, and I figure that the Shimmer is the best option. But as you can see, points are ticking really quickly, and this game is already over. So there we go. Done. 1000 points. Mission achieved. So, there we go guys, that's my final review of the Friesland. Give you a bit of history about the ship, we've given you a bit of insight of how I've set her up and what I and how I've, I've been enjoying my games in her. Is she to be recommended to you? Well, she is a million free XP. Um, so she is a freemium ship. Uh, and if you have them lying around, then by all means go and grab yourself one. She is, I would say she's perfectly, well, perfectly worth getting. But bear in mind that she is not a destroyer destroyer. Um, treat her as a very treat her as a super light cruiser. You're there to support your team. Um, you know, use the rapid fire guns to be able to um, harass, uh, set fires, and things like that. A couple of weaknesses to point out for you is number one, if you are pushed by any sit by anything. Uh, by any sort of ship at all, you have no option but to turn and run. You can't fight your way out of it. There's no scary, you know, oh god, he's going to fire torpedoes. I don't want to go too near him, but I want to take him out. Feeling with the Friesland, she does have exceptionally good uh, guns, though. They are very nice. They are very accurate. They are very good. For, they are very rapid firing. But again, you've only got, you know, you've only got four shots. I mean, the timing is not bad though. 1.2 seconds, as you saw there, with a bit of damage for with the adrenaline rush kicking in. Do I recommend her? I kind of do, and I kind of don't. She's a very, very, you know, she'll suit a very, very unique playset, and you'll either love her or you'll hate her. Um, personally, for me, I don't think she's a bad do at all. Um, there are certainly far, far better tier 9 premiums out there. Black... Benham, um, for example, um, John Bart, Georgia for call and things like that. But she is still, you know, a, a worthy ship to put in your port if you want something that has a bit of IRL truth about her. Um, let's not forget, okay, she has been put in the game exactly as she was the day she left service. So, for all intents and purposes, the Friesland that you are playing in game, yeah, okay, we don't have torpedoes. Yeah, okay, we don't have the best concealment. But the reality is that as the destroyer class changed throughout the time from the end of the world from the end of World War II up to you know the 90, the mid 90, mid to late 1950s and onwards, this is what you would see. This is the kind of thing, kind of role the destroyer changed into. It was more of an anti-submarine warfare ship. It wasn't so much torpedo run and gun. Um, you know, the days of firing torpedoes from your from your your main your main ship of war, your frigates, your cruisers, your corvettes, etc. Your, um, you know, they don't they weren't around much after that. This was a period where it, it kind of fell away. And so she is absolutely retrospectively correct now. Obviously, you know, everyone will be going, well, but what about the game and all this kind of stuff? There are two things that people come, people say about this game is one, we want it to be like, want it more realistic. But when you introduce realism, as is with the Friesland, you have the other vocal side that will say, I don't want this. It's not scary enough. I can't push. I can't do monster damage. I can't. Guys, I just did 65k. I'd say that's pretty decent damage in anybody's book. At the end of the day, you either like her for the realism, or you don't. Nobody is making you go and spend 1 million free XP on this ship. The only person making you do that is you. Not me. Not Wargaming. Not the person who's off to my left. Who is nobody. But you. And if you want to buy her, you go and get her. Does she have sentimental value to our our Dutch player base? Hell yeah, she does. Um, will they have her as a park queen? You never know. People might do that. Um, she is available in the Wargaming Premium Shop. 
But again, the final decision, as always, lies with you, the community. Make of it what you will. I think she's a great ship, and I think I've had a lot of fun with her. But I've had to realise as I've been as I've t as I've been testing her and you know playing her in live today. Remember, she's not a destroyer. She's a super light cruiser. You're not. You can't push and scout push and harass with torpedoes. But you do have a damn. You have a damn good set of guns that are very accurate that fire very rapidly. She's got use in the game. You just have to take your time and play her patiently. Anyway, guys, that's my final. That's my final few words on it. You feel free to do as as you wish. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've changed the layout ever so slightly on the review. Um, and yes, I'm not wearing the blue t-shirt, so I'm no longer the floating head. Um, but I do have oh, that's in the wash. That's why. Anyway, enjoy yourselves, guys, and I will see you all on my next video. Enjoy this one, and I'll see you soon. Good night, everybody.